17-11 to go here in the first half of play. Toby Bailey shot off the mark. UCLA and Xavier both fighting for a trip to the Sweet 16 in San Antonio. Iowa State already advancing as they beat Cincinnati by one. Skip Process in this game has been able to get the tempo going a little bit, I think, the way they want, because when J.R. Henderson pushes it up, you get Toby Bailey taking shots with all, without passes. That's all pitch and foul. You've got the kind of tempo that Xavier wants. So Toby Bailey picking up the foul. He's a junior from Los Angeles. First team all packed in as you take a look at Steve Lavin. This is exactly the kind of team that Steve Lavin would prefer not to play against because it forces his group into a decision where they not only have to make good decisions, but they've got to make them quickly. And even though he may not admit it as a coach, that has been one of the downfalls of this team. Here's Brown. Delaware and a turnover again by the Bruins. Yeah, they bounce it on the out of bounds line, and Steve Lyman is trying to settle this group down just a little bit. You have to bounce it over the line, and J.R. Henderson was trying to make a little drop pass to Cameron Dollar, and you'll see it right. Well, here's the hoop right here where Brown is wide open. They cannot stand in the paint and think Brown's going to miss that shot. Now watch the pass. He'll bounce it right on the line as Cameron Dollar starts one way and then goes back to his what is our left. And the ball is clearly right on the west. It's on the line. And the official makes the call. So UCLA, you know that the pressure is going to cause problems because Xavier, it's the crux of their whole system. Seven possessions, six turnovers. And only two shots by the, the, the Bruins. That's what they obviously do. They turn it over. Bragg gets inside. Had to change his shot. Jelani McCoy right there. Dollar hustling it down. Going to the basket. Rejected the follow oh, the plan. The tip in for McCoy. They are playing. Chasing it down. And a steal. Here's Anderson. Bruins inside. Bailey. Offensive foul. Decisions. 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 First of all, I saw Dowler did a good job coming up with the ball. And then Bailey follows it, and you see it looks like yeah, coming over. That's Lumpkin that keeps it from going. And then long arm, long reach of Jelani McCoy gets it put into the basket finally. So Toby Bailey picks up his second foul, and he has to be counseled by Steve Lavin on the bench. Lavin has done his best to try to turn around the attitude of this UCLA team. And then this is part of a decision-making conversation and an attitude because he reacted incorrectly. I thought totally inappropriately when the official made the call and Steve Lavin can afford not to have Bailey on the floor for any prolonged period of time. In the corner, Williams underneath. Rebound flag and a foul. Now don't forget, those of you expecting to see Iowa against Kentucky at 740, we will definitely get you out there for the opening tip-off. That game being played in Salt Lake City, but right here in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Xavier with a four-point lead, four minutes into the first half of play. As Ray Bragg, the junior from Fresno, California, steps to the free throw line. And the other thing to take into consideration here, Mark, Xavier plays at this tempo. While I, UCLA believes they like to run, they don't run like this all the time. Xavier does. Remember, we were in practice and skip process even here on Thursday. The only thing he said was faster, faster, faster. That is their tempo, just faster. Charles O'Bannon bringing the ball up the floor. Here's Jelani McCoy, and McCoy is detained and fouled. Jelani coming off a very big game at 21 points, 8 of 9 from the field to go along with 8 rebounds against Charleston Southern. Brown is down behind the bench. And we'll get a report on Lenny Brown in a moment, but right now we'll step away. Xavier up by 6. Lenny Brown is playing with a strained back. Toby Bailey and Chris Johnson, for that matter, both have two fouls. And look at the turnover situation. And this is <laughs> Kelvin Cato, Kenny Pratt, and Sean Bankhead, the winners of our first game as the Cyclones from Iowa State 
outlasted the Bearcats from Cincinnati. Yeah, that's got to be a pretty ecstatic group. You know, those seniors know. I, I remember that. That was one of the things that drove our team as we were going for the championship, that we had four seniors, and it's your last shot. So you, you tend to, you know, you think you're playing hard as juniors. You know you're playing hard as seniors. D.J. Johnson starting in his 75th straight game. He's only a junior. Now, Iowa State advancing to San Antonio the first time they'll be playing in the Sweet 16 since the 1985-86 season when they had Jeff Hornacek and Jeff Greer, two NBA players currently. Second free throw by Johnson is good, and he'll take a seat. And they bring Braggs in the game. So that's where they get all their inside play. And, and theirs is in Xavier. Theirs is not height. It's, it's more girth width. Henderson almost lost it. He'll get it to Abana. They are Henderson, 6'9", bringing the ball up the floor. Brandon Lloyd, sophomore from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Obana. Boy, he's stroking that jumper. I mean, he's standing right up looking to get it in the basket. And without him, the Bruins don't have much of an offense right now. 32% three-point shooter on the season, 20 of 62. Eight points now for Charles O'Bannon. Here's Lenny Brown hopping inside, rejected. Bruins looking to push it. Dollar with Lumpkin on him. He had it stripped going up. Oh, McCoy picked it up underneath and laid it in. If he lost the ball. He can't grab it again. But Jelani McCoy got there and was able to get it and save the Bruins from the potential turnover. UCLA up 17-15. Braggs, backside, Lumpkin, bump, got it off, offensive foul. Well, you got to take advantage of the teams you have. Jelani McCoy, long arms, tough shot for Brown to get off. Good defense there, leads to a basket. The ball goes straight in the air, and Jelani, who made the block, gets back and gets two for the Bruins. Jelani coming into the NCAA tournament had one block in 25 of 28 games. Don't forget Iowa, Kentucky coming up for those of you looking forward to that game. Approaching the 10-minute mark, first half, UCLA two-point lead, Dollar wheeling, got it off. Late on the rim, tipped up, and finally recovered by UCLA. Dollar. Dollar has been huge for the Bruins. O'Bannon spoke for it because he had shot time, clock, I mean, clock, <laughs> time on the shot clock, and Dollar was stroking. That's his third three-pointer. 11 points now for Charles O'Bannon. UCLA on an 8-0 run. Here's the steal to the basket. Oh, go with it, young fella. Go with it. Charlie O. With an acrobatic move. Yes, that ball did go in. UCLA on a big run here. 22-15, they lead Xavier. Let's look at the replay. 9.35 in the first half. And we'll keep you up to date on that game. We want to get you up to your game where the defending national champions take on Iowa. The Kentucky Wildcats and the Hawkeyes of Iowa. That's coming up right now. Let's send you courtside with Gary Thorne and Dan Bonner. Gary? Welcome, everybody, to the Western Region, Salt Lake City, Utah, the second game of the second round. The number eight Iowa Hawkeyes taking on the defending NCAA champion, Kentucky Wildcats. Here's how they got to this point in the second round. Kentucky with a victory over Montana. Iowa beats Virginia. St. Joe's won in overtime today against Boston College. Gary Thorne, Dan Bonner, and welcome, everyone. The question, can Kentucky repeat? Well, Iowa's going to try and have something to say about that. They're the team looking for the upset here. And if they're going to spring the upset, Gary, they've got to establish a presence inside. And as a matter of fact, they've got the guys who can do it, led by Ryan Bowen, who had 15 points in the win against Virginia. But more impressive than his 15 points were his 16 rebounds, 10 of them offensive. Iowa's going to need some opportunities like that if they're going to spring the upset. Kentucky lost four starters. Despite that, they are a very strong team, and they do have a chance to repeat. Boy, they sure do. They
they can really get up and down the court. They feature an offense that is very exciting in transition, and it's not hard to be exciting when you have one of the country's best players in All-American, Ron Mercer. Kentucky can get the ball out and get it down the court, and Mercer is just the guy who can finish. But one of the things that is a real feature of Kentucky is their pressure defense. In the game against Montana, they forced, they stole the ball 14 times. Wayne Turner leading the way with five of those steals, and he can convert on the other end as well, tied his career high against Montana. So Kentucky will be looking for the opportunity to go back. Tom Davis will try and deny it in his 11th season for Iowa. You take a look at their starting lineup, the same they had in the game yesterday. Woolridge, the man to watch. He is their leader. For Kentucky, Rick Pitino, 15 a season, six titles in uh, the halls at Kentucky. Their starting lineup with the All-American, uh, Ron Mercer. Mike Mayock joining us here in uh, Salt Lake. Mike? Thanks, Gary. You know, the big news on the Kentucky sidelines is that All-American senior Derek Anderson is in uniform for the first time since he tore his anterior cruciate ligament January against Auburn. Now, Co uh, excuse me, trainer Eddie Jamel told me that he's been doing double sessions in rehab, could probably play some minutes tonight, but head coach Rick Pitino said he would never forgive himself if anything ever happened to Anderson. So it's questionable as to whether or not he'll get in the game. That is a real surprise. Boy, that's a stunning development, and I would be surprised if Anderson got in the game. Today's officials, Dick Paparo, Larry Rose, and Ed Corbett. Can Iowa pull a big upset? They come in from the Big Ten and at large berth against Kentucky, the winner of the SEC. Kentucky leading the series 3-2. Last time they met 73 when Kentucky came away with the eight-point win over Iowa. We are ready to go. Great to have you with us here in Salt Lake City. Kentucky in white controlling it. That's Epps, Mercer, Epps making the start here in this game for Kentucky. Turner working outside. Iowa opens in a man-to-man -man defense. They played a lot of zone against Virginia, and here they get a mismatch down inside. Does Kentucky, and Padgett takes more right to the basket. Scott Padgett, the sophomore who had eight points, points in the opening round, gets the first two here. Woolridge the other way. And Woolridge is really going to be a key for Iowa. He's going to have to handle the pressure, and that's the way you handle it. What great quickness and strength to get the ball to the basket. Andre Woolridge, and he got fouled. When somebody presses you, you have to make them pay for the pressure, and Woolridge takes it hard to the basket. Padgett, who just scored for Kentucky, reaches in and gets the foul. But Woolridge, what a great step around Mercer. You can tell just by looking at that young man the kind of strength he possesses. He is a senior out of Omaha, 38th in the nation and 20 points per game. At 17 in the first matchup and has opened this one up with the first three points for Iowa, Kentucky. Pressure put on by Iowa. Mercer, the All-American, off the front. Loose in the middle, and Iowa comes away with it, Del Moore. The pressure by each team is going to create some openings for the other team if they can avoid turnovers. Mercer with the shot that he would normally make, those are going to have to go down. That's McCoslin, good free throw shooter to Bowen, who had a great first game. Kentucky showing zone. He's got to find McCoslin, the nation's leading three-point shooter. Rucker is the man underneath for Iowa. Had 19 points in the opener, well over his usual average. That one up and over time to the there to knock the way McCoslin, but he got it back, and then he got fouled. Iowa committing the foul, Kent McCoslin. One of the things that you try to accomplish with the half-court zone defense is to prevent Andre Woolridge from penetrating, beating people off the dribble. Tom Davis' team, not a great shooting team. Here's that coming. He's going on momentarily, but he'll back it out as Iowa got back. Turner got three and eight, could not convert. Battled away, Mercer. They get back outside to Turner. Just underway here in the second game in the West region. Number one, Kentucky. Number one in the Western Sea. Iowa with that 3 2 zone. Adds it underneath. Block, hook it. Had two chances, but could not get it over. The alley oop underneath, deflected away. Both teams opening up running. Mercer. That's what both teams do, Gary. Everybody out there is going to get a workout today. Good positioning underneath. Kentucky gets the two with Frickett getting it. He had position. Rucker will wait. Back out to Woolwood. Rucker, freshman, 19 points in the first game in their win. 
and he looked strong underneath. Rucker did a great job with that jump shot in the 10 to 12 foot range, and that's where he needs to get himself at the end of this pressure. He can get that open shot if he positions himself properly, because you figure Woolridge can do a pretty good job against the press. Well, here's the shot clock running down. Bowen a deflected pass. McCoslin the rebound. They'll reset the clock. Turner, the foul, F on Woolridge. F the foul. In the opening round win against Virginia, Tom Davis's Iowa Hawkeyes got or secured 22 offensive rebounds. And they're able to keep possession with an offensive rebound right there. They are caught, comes into the basketball game for Iowa. They will go to their bench. Run it six or seven deep. Clock passing it off into the corner there. Woolrich got for three. That was a Rucker got it. Rucker underneath. I don't really like that play where you go up, make it look like a shot, but you get it to the guy underneath. And Rucker was there and opens it up. Epps, that's the three. Anthony Epps. He had 59 trays during the regular season. And the way I was going to handle the press is just give the ball to Woolrich. McCause won a three-point shooter. He led the team with 67 three-pointers for Iowa. Mercer can't get it. Gary, both of these teams like to run up and down the court. The game is not really helter-skelter, but each team trying to get out and take advantage of offensive opportunities. Early in the game, we've seen that the Iowa strategy to beat the Kentucky pressure is to just give the ball to Woolridge, and he's done a marvelous job so far. Lersman has come basketball game for Iowa, and Allen Edwards is in for Kentucky. He played in only one minute in the opening round. He has had a bad back and a bad ankle. He is in the ball game, number three for the Wildcats. Well, it's obvious that the pace of this game is going to be a very quick one, so each coach is going to be really challenged to get the guys on the court a sufficient amount of rest so they can be fresh in the last 10 minutes or so of the game. Iowa with an 8-7 lead early on here in the first four minutes. They've gone out at Rucker the center out. That's on the loose ball rebound. Turner. Prickett just doing a great job getting position inside. Batted away and stepping on the line is Edwards. A wide open game anticipated, and we've got it. And he's done well. He got a foul here on uh, Williams. He's done very well defensively, just getting in the way of nothing else. Second free throw, got the bounce. UCLA, 6.23 to go here in the first half of play. They lead it. 33-22. Their largest lead of the game. Johnson underneath. Too strong. Knocked down by O'Bannon. There's the patience. Now they're showing some patience. And that's, that in itself is a good decision. Anderson had it knocked away with space in front of him, going towards the basket. Lunkett with Brandon Loy, got the pitch, shot off, rims out. Henderson with another rebound. J.R. Henderson hammered on the rebound. And he has five so far here in the first half. O'Bannon left-hand jump shot. Charles O'Bannon is really cooking. Oh, he's the one carrying it. He's just feeling it, and every time he touches it, he's got something good coming for him. 15 points. 35-22. Lumpkin sliding inside. Deals it off. Bragg had it knocked away. Well, Lloyd gets called for that foul, but it was a good defensive play, as you talked about, with J.R. Henderson, because... Bragg looked like he had a, a shot. You can see the good dish to Bragg, but you see Henderson go up, time it, and get all ball. Bragg's wanted a foul, and the foul was on the other side by Lloyd. And a 20-second time I've called, as you take a look at Steve Lavin, who was awarded that new contract, four years, $1.6 million. And when talking to him, it was interesting to listen to the, some of the things that he wants to do now. He said, hey, I want to pay off my student loans and get a new apartment. I'm tired of living with a roommate, and it'll be fun to finally be able to uh, do some things. 
Yeah, he was really, really doing a, a lot of talk. I think he's just happy to have that behind him because one of the things he talked about in getting that new contract was the feel or the, it, the way the players now respond because it took the interim tag off of it. And so the players respond to him better. They respond to one another better. And they do that because Steve Lavin helped put some rules in, involved. For example, if you're late, if you miss school or if you're late, he won't start you. And they needed to see consistently that happen, and you saw guys started to change. And what he did was he benched them, and they got the message. They run back and forth, if you will, to the foul line. So he's got them doing things of discipline, and that helps your decision making, and that's what he was trying to get to. Coming back into the game right now for Xavier James Posey. Darnell Williams at the free throw line. He's got five points. Make it six. 35-24, five, ten to go. Xavier, they pick up full court. One other game going on, Iowa and Kentucky. Right now, Hawkeyes on top by three. UCLA. Their motion system now under Lavin. O'Bannon can't get it to go. They scrapped the high post system that had been a staple of the Jim Herrick era. And right now, these Bruins, a little beaten up. O'Bannon, McCoy. Hey, you know what? The fall of that gun, there was a time when some of the guys wouldn't play with, stuff, with those kinds of things. So that says something about where they've come to. Posey. So Xavier sticking around. Four points now for James Posey. 35-26. Under five to go. Here's a double team in the backcourt. They get it up. Henderson cross-court pass. Lloyd all alone. Short tipped up and in by J.R. Henderson. It's not a thing that you think that Xavier can do because J.R. just too much height. A lot of athletic ability on the floor, just too much height. Out pass inside, drags, and he is fouled. And that should be on Henderson, who just got over there late. I mean, when the tip comes, you see, there won't be anybody else near this but JR. I mean, he could do anything he want with that. Bragg came over late, gave him a shot, but Henderson has done a very good job for the Bruins, both handling the ball, being available, available defensively, and getting some putbacks to help that height advantage of the Bruins take effect on, the, on Xavier. Bragg's at the free throw line, and he'll get the first to go. The Midwest region, Iowa State already advancing to the Sweet 16. Uh, they went on to beat Cincinnati in our first game. And the second game here, Xavier and UCLA. Xavier out of the Atlantic 10, five teams from the 10 getting into the NCAA tournament this season. And UCLA, their third straight conference championship out of the Pac-10. And it got over a big hurdle on Thursday, having lost to Princeton in the first round last year having, after winning the championship the year before. I think that really helped these guys as they are now in this game a lot more confident about what they can get done. Almost a turnover. Bailey dumps down Henderson. J.R. Henderson, and you see the poise of the Bruins. The pressure not causing them any problems at all. No, they've really handled the pressure, and they've made some good decisions. They've made some bad decisions, but they've made more good decisions. Lenny Brown leading in. Here's Dollar. Nice look down low. And a foul. Cameron Dollar just whipping it inside. I cannot tell you how huge he's been for them. He's been huge. Every time they need to make a play, Dollar is in there making them do something. Look at him. He's, he's going at this with a vengeance. And he gets here. He sees that Henderson's wide open and makes a, a pass that just goes to the eye of the needle. Henderson saying an intentional foul. I don't know if I'm hard-pressed to disagree with that. So J.R. Henderson, Jr., from Bakersfield, 59% free throw shooter on the season. He's got nine points to go along with six rebounds. He's 6'9", 
not only he can bring the ball up the floor, but also can post you up as well, and you've seen that already. The bringing him up the floor is the most important because you don't have many four or five men that can guard J.R. Henderson, so that takes all the pressure off a of dollar, and dollars made his presence felt another way. Sherwin Anderson in the game on the baseline. Williams takes off. Oh, I'm telling you, this young man is confident. He just rolls. Even if Henderson decided to go up, he just goes right at it. In the corner, Lloyd. The Bruins can do no wrong right now. 43-32. Almost a steal. Anderson, the kick out. Lenny Brown, pump fake. Looked up and recovered. That, that, that's a, a smart rebound there. Posey, Williams, gathers himself, comes up short, scramble for the ball, Braggs, wrap around, and in. Williams makes the play. After Posey tips it to himself a couple times, a tough pass to Williams, he gets it, and finally gets the ball to go back in the other direction. Posey now with eight points. Charles O'Bannon, everybody on this UCLA team, they can handle the ball a little bit. Yeah, and it takes the pressure off of Cameron Dollar, so he can get a break. He's actually over in the right-hand corner, letting him move the around, ball around a bit, because he's tired. Backdoor, Dollar, not inside, pulled up. Dollar coming off a 15-point game. Here's Anderson. Dollar hustling down. Anderson somehow got it to drop for him. That last number's going back. Here's Bailey. Nice deal, O'Bannon. The roll won't fall. Henderson, the tip in, also shut off. Lenny Brown wheeling. And a whistle and foul. 41. That's got to be Posey. That's Xavier's third foul on Posey, you see. Trying to make the move. Anderson, again, goes in to make sure there's a little contact. Bailey backs off because of three. They push it on the other end, get the ball coming back, and Posey picks up a foul in an effort to try to steal the ball after pushing it up the court. So Charles O'Bannon takes a seat. And he has two fouls. But they don't want him to get his third with 135 to go here in the first half of play. Toby Bailey also with two fouls. He's still in the lineup. As Lloyd... He is the designated shooter on this team. Ironically, shooting only 50% from the free throw line on the season. And look at Cameron Dollar. He's bent over. He is tired. He's worn out. He's, he's put every ounce of his soul into this game to get his Bruins this nine-point lead. But it's his heart and spirit that has the Bruins where they are with 135. Nine lead changes already. Iowa currently up by one. And watch the eyes of Andre Woolridge. Side to side, looking for the opportunity, handling that Kentucky pressure. And then he finally finds J.R. Koch, who nails it in the basket. Koch had 10 points in the opening game here in the West. A couple points more than he averaged. A strong game on the boards as well. 11.30. Sometimes. Underneath. Wow, what a start for him. That's 10 points. All year long, people have talked about Kentucky's weakness being on the inside, and when you're a guy who has the kind of ability that cricket has... ...decide whether a sitting president can be... Auburn Hills, UCLA leads Xavier, 45 to 36, a minute 35 left in the half. Let's send you up to Salt Lake City for a moment. Check in on Kentucky, Iowa. Kentucky leads by two. One tie and ten lead changes in this game, Clark. Back and forth, back and forth. Good matchup. Both teams like to get out and run, and there's a triple. Looks like McCausland from behind the line. Jared Prickett has ten points on tonight. And Iowa leads, though, by one, 17-16. An evenly matched game so far. Exactly. Iowa, an outstanding rebounding club. Kentucky must play even on the glass to have a chance to win it. So just to whet your appetite there, we're going to take you out there live at halftime of your game. Meantime, let's go back to Auburn Hills, UCLA Xavier, and Gus Johnson and Quinn Buckley. All right, Pat. 45-38 our score here. Approaching the one-minute mark, UCLA, they have broken the Xavier press with no problem so far. i tell you what the problem may be in the second half, sir. It may be a little bit tired. Get out, you know, out get a little winded. Because I'm watching...
the Brewers now, and everybody's moving a little bit slower. Here's Henderson. Looks backside. Johnson off the side of the rim. Shot clock winding down. They got a chance to go for one. So Anderson brings the ball up the floor. About a one-second differential between the shot and the game clock. Braggs almost threw it out of bounds. Anderson chases it down. They get a chance to get it thrown in by being down just five. That would be a good place to be for them, considering how hard they've had to fight just to get back in this game. Now, don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll head back to the studio for Pennzoil at the half. Pat O'Brien, Clark Kellogg will get you updated on all the tournament news and all the scores and highlights. That's all coming up on Pennzoil at the half. We'll take you out to that Kentucky game, Iowa, and the Wildcats. We will see how Kentucky fares in postseason play without Derek Anderson. In this game, <laughs> what, what Braggs was trying to do was kind of get the officials to see that there was a foul that should have been called, so he stayed out just trying to make his point. Six seconds to go. Kick out. No good. Rebound. Six back Braggs, and he is fouled. Well, that's a tired leg kind of foul because, because with JR, never really jumped. I mean, you're looking at now, here's the shot, and it's a brick, no doubt about it. Now, JR has no chance to get this, and he just comes right across Braggs on the hand. And you can see, <laughs> Skip Prosser thinks he's finally got a foul. And look at Coach Lavin. He is really running a marathon on the sidelines, sweating out of his shirt. Well, that's why he came out of the jacket early. He knew it was going to be a sticky one. 32 years old, Steve Lavin. <laughs> Ray Braggs with that big wide body, nine points, eight rebounds. It wears on you. And I am very anxious to see how UCLA withstands what I know is going to be another power surge. You can expect a run from Xavier. The Bruins done a very good job here in the first half. They have a chance to go into the locker room, trailing by only five. And Henderson throws it the length of the floor, intercepted by Johnson, and that is the end of the first half of play. Ed O'Bannon, 15 points, three of four from the three-point line, and UCLA, six of 11 overall from downtown. And that is the end of the half. Coming up, Battle Ryan, Clark Kellogg will be along with Finn Doyle at the half right after this message. And a word from your local station. Gets him to pick up his dribble. They need to keep their feet. They don't want to go for those fakes. Second foul on Mercer, the All-American. So two fouls on Mercer, two fouls on Turner. Ulrich goes to the line. And Edwards back in the game. We mentioned about Edwards as Woolridge misses that one. But Edwards had back problems in the first two games of the Southeastern Conference Tournament and then injured his ankle in the championship game and only played a very few moments in the Thursday night round here. One minute of time's all he got, and Woolridge misses both ends of that. Rebound loose in the lane. And a scramble, and the arrow will keep it at this end of the court. Woolridge, though, a good free throw shooter, did not get either of those, and Iowa's struggling in the line, one for five. Just tremendous intensity. Both teams, what a great job by Moore to get around the block out with that spin move, but he's just not able to control the ball. Now Woolridge gonna sit down again. Tom Davis gonna try to take every opportunity he can to get him just a few seconds worth of rest. An assembly line from the sidelines. Rucker on the inbound turns. There's Moore again, but he still wasn't able to control it. He got his hands on two consecutive offensive rebounds, but not able to control. Mills took it away. Padgett, Kentucky back the other way. Edwards. Edwards for three. Off the front. Lorsman the deep rebound. 22-19, Kentucky on top. Rucker, big guy had it batted away, and Edwards commits the foul coming over the top. Edwards when you take advantage of this offer. But hurry, supplies are limited. At Plymouth, we don't mean to... Team foul, so Rucker will go to the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Rucker, three for four from the free throw line in the first game. 
Iowa's already missed a couple of free throws this evening, and they were, you're going to pull an upset like this, you've got to take advantage of every opportunity, and the Hawkeyes only one of five from the line early. Rucker gets the first, so he'll get the bonus. And 22-19. We've had one. 10-3-2. St. Joe's over Boston College. Go Pennzoil. Hi, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with Clark Kellogg, and welcome to Pennzoil at the Half. Xavier, down by only five and taking a page out of Winston Churchill's book, Never Give Up, right? They never do. They play a fast game, and they always feel like they're in it because they keep the pressure on at both ends of the court. All right, got a good game going on in Salt Lake City right now, the defending national champions. Some tables, veggie pizzas are made with unique veggies. Two in the first half. Let's go courtside to Dan Bonner, and here's Gary Thorne. Here in Salt Lake City, underway in the first half with Kentucky leading Iowa, 22 to 20. 8.15 to go. Kentucky, the defending NCAA champion, seated number one in the West against the number seed Big Ten champion, Iowa. Mills. Mohammed with a rebound. Whistled underneath, though, in the rebounding action, and the foul will go against Iowa. Here in the West in Salt Lake City, you see St. Joe's already having won their game in overtime against Boston College, facing the winner of Kentucky, Iowa. That's how they have gotten to this point here in the West. Tomorrow, the other teams in the West will be playing in Tucson, Stanford and Wake Forest, the number two seed, Utah and UNC Charlotte. And as expected here, Gary, this is a very up-and-down basketball game. Iowa has turned the ball over a couple of times more than Tom Davis would wish. Seven turnovers for the Hawkeyes. But you have to expect that you're going to turn it over some against Kentucky. The biggest problem for Iowa is that they are only two of seven from the free throw line. Watch goes to the bench. There is Rucker, 19 in the first round against Virginia. And he's got it. Well, he's coming on at the free throw line. He's got six points now, and he'll, for the second time, get a shot at the bonus. He missed the second half a moment ago. Kentucky's lead has been cut to one. Rucker only a freshman. And he's got both ends of this one. There is not a moment when you can bring a sub in that goes by without it happening. <laughs> Rucker's gone out of there. Moore has gone out of there. We've had 14 lead changes in this game, and there's still 8.03 to go in the first half. And the substitutions, Mohammed is going to the bench for Kentucky. Pressure by both teams. McCausland will back off on Epps. Cricket has 13 points in the game for Kentucky. The next highest scorer for the Wildcats only has three. That's Epps. All been Prickett working underneath. He's at the high post now and comes out deep to help. That's Prickett right there, 32 for Kentucky. Blocked underneath, good play Robinson. He almost tipped that one in the basket. If he touches it, it's almost in the basket. He's so tall when he makes that kind of tip, he's right there. Woolridge back in the game. See if Prickett lays off Robinson a little bit. Robinson not really a big offensive threat. McCausland, three-point shooter. Good defense by Kentucky. Woolridge, McCausland, Bowen, all three-point shooters on this Iowa team. Here, Kentucky drops into that zone as the shot clock runs down. Woolridge missed it. Prickett comes away with a rebound. Pack it to F. Kentucky doing a nice job as the shot clock runs down, dropping, what well, changing defenses. A couple of times we've seen him change from the man-to-man -to, -man to the zone, and Iowa hasn't handled it very well. Forcing Iowa to hesitate, and that's cost them time on the clock, and then they've had to rush the shot. Edwards trying to go in, get cut off by Bowen. Epps, whistle, travel. Kentucky at 12. And so 6.46 left before the halftime, and Kentucky and Iowa, they're all tied at 22. And who's watching this one closely? St. Joe's, because they meet the winner, and St. Joe's beat Boston College this afternoon. Great ball all day, by the way, overtime there, 81-77. Martelli the Magnificent, after a slow start, the Eagles gain momentum. Dwayne Woodward drives the lane, finds a wide open Antonio Granger, sets up nails at three. Then Rashid Bay answers back. They knocked down 14 of 43 three-point field goals did the Hawks. Down by as many as 13. The Hawks make a run here. Arthur Yacht Davis contributes. If he makes a nice move, hits the jumper. What I tell you, Martelli the Magnificent. 
BC tied the game in the last five seconds, went to overtime, and Martelli talked about what got the Hawks back. We, we didn't think we were out of the game. We came out of character a little bit and uh, started to whine, and, and that's not our style. We just play the games, and, you know, there was a long time to go. We made a number of big threes to get us back in the game. And so Hawk Hill is going wild tonight. Yeah. Overtime game there, 81-77. Another great game this afternoon in the Midwest. Second round, Iowa State beat Cincinnati by one, 67-66. And uh, this was a good game, wasn't it, Clark? Tremendous. Tons of lead changes back and forth, back and forth. Kenny Pratt in the gym range from deep. Under a minute, Cincinnati head by one. Iowa State's J.C. Holloway with a slick inbound pass to Clay Edwards. Edwards puts the Cyclones up by one. One last chance. Too hard by Damon Flynn Doesn't and the Bearcats go, in. go Afterwards, home. Quinn spoke to Tim Floyd. Any preference, David, at UCLA? No, no preference. I, I didn't even know they were playing. <laughs> so we're just kind of happy to happy to get our first shot at the Sweet 16. Uh, these kids deserve it, and they uh, they uh, they really like each other, and I think they played like it today. Cyclones advanced to the Sweet 16 for the first time in 11 years. Shot 61% today. Congratulations. They move on. In the Southeast, second round action. Arizona had a scare from College of Charleston, but prevailed 73 to 69, and Lute Olsen is breathing fine now. A little nervous during the game. Stacey Harris, watch him nail the three as the Cougars take a one-point lead into the locker room at the half. Transition three for Harris. He had four of those before halftime. Arizona tough on the glass. They did a great job. 41 to 29. They won the boards. Miles Simon getting his own miss. Want to see freshman poise? Mike Bibby goes over there and nails a three to give the Wildcats a three-point lead late in the second half. Then with time running out, Arizona up by two. Mel President misses the jumper, and the Wildcats survive. And afterwards, we spoke to John Crest about this great run he had. But it's over now. The seniors have to move on with their lives. The program has to move and take the next step. And uh, we'll just need to relax and watch this great, great uh, CBS event. Uh, the road to the Final Four in March Madness is something that we all love, even in a loss. It's a great, great scene. Now we happen to agree with him, don't we, Clark? Yes, sir. Arizona moves on, though, 73 to 69. North Carolina, a couple of stories here. The big one was Dean Smith wins 877. They beat Colorado 73 to 56. In the East, second round action, Cal beat Villanova 75 to 68. Pounded them in the paint in the second half. Tony Gonzalez came up huge. Also in the Southeast, Kansas prevailed over Purdue. It was a tough game for them, though, 75-61. The fifth straight Sweet 16 trip for the 34 and 1 Jayhawks of Kansas. Thank you for watching Pennzoil at the half. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. See you later. Pennzoil at the half was sponsored by Pennzoil, formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Hockey is spinning. If you look at the score, Iowa leads by one against the defending national champions, 33 to 32. Down Auburn Hill, Xavier and UCLA, and Xavier just will not give up, will they, Clark? They certainly won't. They've controlled points in the paint as well as the free throw game. If they make some three-point field goals, they were 0-10 in the first half. If they start making three-point field goals, watch out. Meantime, Charles O'Bannon, senior, playing like his brother Ed two years ago, and he led the Bruins to the national title. They're up by five, though, just beginning the second half. UCLA's won 10 in a row overall. Got them playing. Playing with great confidence and poise, and they love this kind of a game. One of the things they need to do, though, is be selective in how much they play the transition game. They've got a size advantage. On occasion, they need to slow it down, pull it out, and try to run their half-court game just like they're doing right now. We'll go there live at halftime and show you the action there. In the meantime, let's go back up to Salt Lake City. The Kentucky Stick Trails by one, 208 left in the half. Second game in the Western Region. And with two minutes left to go in the first half, Iowa's got the lead on the defending champion, Kentucky Wildcats, 33-32. Lorsman for three for Iowa. And Mohammed again with a rebound. And Cricket out running the court. They didn't see him that time. Cricket's been the big man for Kentucky here with 15 points in the first half. That goes to him. Zone defense for Iowa. Edwards traveled that time. Lersman, good deal along with Bowen. Coming up at the half, 
All kinds of action, of course. Pat O'Brien, Clark Kellogg will have the scores and highlights, live look-ins at games that are going on. Our Pennzoil at the half. And Woolridge able to get back in the game. Iowa with 10 turnovers, Kentucky with 7. We have just a minute 29 left to go. Woolridge back in the basketball game. That's Rucker. Rucker's picked up seven points so far. McCoslin's got a couple of three-pointers. Lorisman one, Woolridge one for Iowa. Man-to-man -man defense for Kentucky. Bowen on top. Woolridge will come back out with 10 left on the shot clock. Iowa in this first half has failed to get a shot off once and has run the clock down a couple of times. Rucker had a block Mohammed. What a job Mohammed's done coming off the bench for Kentucky. Epps brings it up to Mills. Mills, he got it for three. Boy, that's a young man playing with some confidence. Three, three-pointers now for Mills, who's got 11 points in the game. Gary, what we've seen in the first half against the Kentucky man-to-man -man defense is Iowa works the ball around. As the shot clock starts to run down, they pull the ball back out to set up the play at the end of the shot clock. And whenever they do that, Kentucky drops into a zone defense, and Iowa has not handled that particular Kentucky defensive strategy very well. Epps now has seven assists, and I'm telling you what, Mills, he gets himself in position when he gets his feet set. He's been deadly over the last four games. Out of Lexington, Kentucky, the junior Cameron Mills had 19 points in the first go-around against Montana and is putting it up here in this game. 39 seconds to go in this half. Three or four from behind the arc. Mills with 11 points in the game. Woolridge, the lane, gets the fake and gets the foul. Brickett went up and fouled him. That's great recognition by Woolridge to see the Prickett's guarding him, and he backs him down in and gives the pump fake. Just gives the pump fake, and Prickett's got to be worried about the jump shot, and unfortunately for Prickett, he jumped into Woolridge and then allowed Woolridge to put the body on Prickett. Free throw line where he's four for six in this game and 75% on the season. Woolridge makes it. Gary, and keep in mind that Turner and Mercer have been on the bench for most of the first half. They picked up two, they each picked up two fouls very early, so the Kentucky Wildcats have played most of the game without their starting point guard and their All-American. And yet, our trailing in this game uh, were for a while. Now Iowa's come back to tie it up, 35-35. Kentucky's been able to maintain a lead or a tie here without their stars in. Epps Shot. moving on more. Shot clock off. So we're looking at the time remaining in this first half here in Salt Lake City. Second game in the West today, and first one went into OT before St. Joe's beat Boston College. And this one's closing in on the half and is tied. Edwards lost control of it. Goes out of bounds. Kentucky will retain possession with 1.7 on the clock. And Kentucky still has their first half 20 second timeout, and Rick Pitino calls it right now. He's going to get Mercer back in the game with 1.7 seconds. Obviously, they have time to get off a shot. Of course, what we're talking about with the 20 second timeouts, each coach has three. But one of them has to be used in the first half, and since Kentucky hadn't used their first half 20-second timeout, had they not used it right there, they would have lost it. So Rick Pitino with 1.7 seconds left, putting Mercer back in. Mercer's got seven points, and the upside of this strategy is you like to have Mercer in the game for his offense, but the downside is you hope he doesn't pick up that third personal foul on an offensive foul or an over the back. Well, he's only played seven minutes. Edwards tried to go up, couldn't. Rucker knocked it away, and .8 seconds left. Now, .8 seconds is still enough time to catch the ball and shoot it. Edwards underneath Prickett, the intended, and this half's over. And it was a good one. We had 15 lead changes and two ties. 35-35, number eight seeded Iowa against the number one seed in the West, Kentucky, with Kentucky looking to move on to try and defend the NCAA championship. Mike Mayock on the sidelines. Mike. I'm with Coach Patino and Coach Tuff with uh, insignificant playing time with uh, Mercer and Turner. Well, 
fouls a part of the game. Certainly, Ron made a, a silly foul reaching in after he missed the shot. But our guys are stepping up. We stepped up all season. It's a great basketball game. We knew it'd be a war. It's a terrific game. I'm proud of our guys. Okay, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Back to Gary Thorne. And we're looking forward to it. The end of the first half, 35-35. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station.